Here I've got a nice geometry problem, and this comes from a book that I really like called Sacred Mathematics, which is all about Japanese temple geometry problems. So let's see what we've got. So I've got this right triangle, and inside that right triangle, I have four inscribed circles. So I've drawn these in yellow and they have radius capital R1, capital R2, capital R3, and capital R4. And then between the base of our right triangle and each of these circles, I've inscribed three smaller circles. So I've got those as little r1, little r2, and little r3 as the radii. And our goal is to find a relationship between the radii of these small circles. So R1, R2, and R3. And first up, we're going to find a relationship between capital R1, capital R2, and little r1. And actually, I made a video on this before, and I think several people have made videos on this problem. So we'll maybe just sketch it really quickly. Okay, so first off, what we wanna do is create a couple of right triangles inside of this situation having to do with these three circles. So I'll start with the center of this circle, and then I'll also start with the center of this circle. And then what I'll do is I'll draw a line segment from the center of my large radius R1 circle to my small radius R1 circle. So that'll be something like that. And then I'll also drop a line here and a line segment here. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side, like that. So a couple of these lengths are pretty easy to measure, but a couple of them are pretty hard. So notice this length right here is pretty easy to measure. This is capital R1 plus little r1. And then this guy right here is capital R2 plus little r2. And then the height of these two triangles is also pretty easy to measure. Notice this one over here is capital R1 minus little r1. Because we're going almost all the way to the base of this triangle, we stop exactly the length of this radius. And then similarly over here, this will be capital R2 minus little r1. Sorry, that should have been an r1 there. The bases are a little bit more difficult to calculate. So I'll just call this base A and this base B. And then from here, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to both of these triangles, which I have in blue. So let's see what that gives us. That'll give us A squared plus capital R1 minus little r1 squared equals capital R1 plus little r1 squared. So that's what we get for this right, or that's what we get for this left right triangle. And for this right right triangle, we'll have capital B squared plus capital R2 squared minus little r1 squared equals capital R2 squared plus little r1 squared, like that. So those are our two relationships so far. Now let's see what we get from multiplying these out. So this first one will be expanded to the following equation. We'll have a squared plus capital R1 squared minus two capital R1 little r1 plus little r1 squared equals capital R1 squared plus two R1 R1 plus little r1 squared, like that. So let's see some simplification we can do. Notice that this capital R1 squared will cancel with this one when we move it from one side of the equation to the other. This guy will cancel with that guy. And then we'll be left with A squared equals four capital R1 little r1. And now let's see what happens to this second equation. Well, a lot of the calculation is pretty similar, but what we'll end up with is b squared equals four capital R2 little r1. But still, we don't know what a and b are. So what do we need to do in order to figure out a and b? Well, we need to figure out some other triangle which is naturally living in this picture up here. So I think the other right triangle we need will join the centers of these two large circles like this. 
and then it'll have a base like this and a height like that. So now we need to measure all of these parts. So let's notice that this hypotenuse is pretty easy to measure. It's capital R1 plus capital R2. This base up here is hard to measure. It's really just A plus B, okay? And then this guy right here is R1 minus R2. Now we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to this green triangle, and that'll give us the following equation. So we'll have capital R1 minus R2 quantity squared plus A plus B squared equals capital R1 plus capital R2 squared. So that relates our capital R's with our A and B. Now, where can we go from here? Notice these two guys can easily be solved for A and B, leaving us with A is equal to 2 times the square root of capital R1 little r1, and B is equal to 2 times the square root of capital R2 little r1. Then from here, we can take these expressions for A and B and plug them in to our equation that we have down here. So that'll leave us with capital R1 minus capital R2 squared plus, and now I'm gonna do a little bit of a trick here and factor out all of the common stuff that I can. So I can factor a two squared, which is a four out. And then A and B also have this square root of R1 in common, so I can factor that out. That'll be the square root of r1 squared, which is just little r1. And then we're left with the square root of capital R1 plus the square root of capital R2 quantity squared equals r1 plus r2 quantity squared. Okay, so we're running out of room. So let's move that to the top and then we'll finish off this relationship between the radii of these two larger circles and this smaller circle. Okay, so I moved the necessary information up to the top and now we're ready to simplify. And we could just expand and then recombine, but I wanna use a little bit of a trick here. I'm gonna move all of this to the left-hand side. That'll leave me with this four little r1, root r1 plus root r2 squared equals r1 plus r2 squared minus r1 minus r2 squared. This may not seem super helpful, but notice I've written this in the form of a difference of squares. So I have what I'll call capital A squared minus capital B squared. That clearly factors like A minus B times A plus B. So let's see what simplifying effect this has. So A minus B will give us two R2, because the R1s cancel and then the R2s double up times a plus b, but that's going to give us 2r1. So in the end, we have 4r1, r2. Now we can cancel the 4 from both sides, and then we can take the square root. So we'll have the square root of r1 times the square root of capital R1 plus the square root of capital R2 equals the square root of r1 times r2. Now from here, we'll simultaneously take the reciprocal and then move this part over. So that'll give me one over the square root of R1 equals the square root of R1 over the square root of R1, R2 plus the square root of R2 over the square root of R1, R2. So I did two things there. I moved this over and then I took the reciprocal. But notice we have some simplification over here on the right hand side, leaving us with the square root of R1 plus the square root of R2 in the denominator. So we're summing the reciprocal of those two square roots. And that's the relationship that we're going for between these three radii. But let's notice I have a similar relationship between capital R2, R3, and little r2, capital R3, R4, and little r3. So let's maybe get rid of this and we'll start with those three relationships and then finish it off. So on the last board, we derived the following relationship between the radii of these smaller circles and the radii of these larger circles. And now we want to finish it off, but we'll do that by deriving a relationship between the radii of these large circles, kind of forgetting that the small circles are there for now. Okay, so we'll start by putting a little center point on all of these large circles and then connecting them via a line segment. So we'll have this line segment going like this. Okay, great.
Now we can measure parts of this line segment pretty easily. So notice the distance between here and here is R1 plus R2 because it's the radii of this large circle here and this large circle here. The distance here is R2 plus R3. And then finally, the distance here is R3 plus R4. Now from here, we're going to complete a couple of triangles, or I guess we're going to complete four triangles. So here, I'll drop a line here until we're even with this point right here and draw the base across. So that'll give me a right triangle like that. Okay, so this has a height of R1 minus R2. Then we'll do the same thing for this triangle right here. So I'll drop one over like that. And that'll have a height of R2 minus R3. And then similarly over here, this guy will have a height of R3 minus R4. Now, next I'll notice that since all of these bases are parallel, and they share the same hypotenuse. We have this angle measure here is the same as this angle measure here, which is the same as this angle measure here. Furthermore, they are all right triangles. So that means by the angle, angle, angle theorem, these are all similar to each other. But that means we can take the ratio of the hypotenuse to this height and we'll get something equal in all of these cases. So let's just write that down. So we'll have R1 plus R2 over R1 minus R2 is equal to R2 plus R3 over R2 minus R3, which is equal to R3 plus R4 over R3 minus R4. Again, that's by the similarity of these three triangles, which I have in blue here. And now we'll do a little bit of manipulation on this to see if we can simplify this relationship. So let's just look at this equality. So multiplying things around, we'll see that R1 plus R2 times R2 minus R3 is equal to R2 plus R3 times R1 minus R2. Okay, so let's multiply that out. Over here, we'll have R1, R2 plus R2 squared minus R1, R3 minus R2, R3, just by foiling this left-hand side out. Then over on the right-hand side, we'll have R1, R2 plus R1, R3 minus R2 squared minus R2, R3. And now let's see what can simplify. So we've got an R1, R2 here that can cancel with this one over here. We have a R2, R3 here that can cancel with this one over here. But then after that, we've got opposite signs on opposite sides of the equation. I can move this guy over here and this guy over here, and I'll pick up twice each of them. I can divide by two, and that'll leave me with R2 squared equals R1, R3. But recall, that's happening because of the similarity of these two triangles. We could, in parallel, do something by the similarity of those two triangles, and we'll get essentially the same type of equation, except it'll be R3 squared equals R2, R4. But now taking appropriate quotients here, we'll see that R2 over R1 is the same thing as R3 over R2, which is the same thing as R4 over R3. And again, that follows from these two equations right here, just rewritten a little bit. So if all three of those are equal, then we might, might as well set them equal to a new constant, which we'll call A. Okay, so let's bring this fact up to maybe this like empty spot, and then we can finish it off. Let's see where we are so far. So earlier we found out this relationship between the capital R's and the little r's. Then we just determined the following relationship bet just between the larger radii. And now we're ready to finish it off. So let's start with this equation up here and rewrite it a little bit. So we've got the square root of R1 on the bottom. And then we can rewrite that as one over the square root of capital R1 plus one over the square root of capital R2. But now let's try to introduce this fact into this equation. And we can do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator here by the square root of capital R2.
So that will leave us with one over the square root of R2 times the square root of R2 over R1 plus one over the square root of R2. Okay, so again, that's just by multiplying this version of one. But notice this is equal to the square root of A by our notation up here. And then we can factor a common factor out, leaving us with one over the square root of R2 times one plus the square root of A. So we have that is the same thing as one over the square root of R1. Now we can do something similar for these two equations as well. And that'll leave us with one over the square root of R2 2 is equal to 1 over the square root of r3 times 1 plus the square root of a. And then also 1 over the square root of r3 is equal to 1 over the square root of r4 times 1 plus the square root of a, like that. But now to simplify things, let's take this 1 plus the square root of a and rewrite it as b. So that means we can invert these equations and we'll have the square root of R1 equals the square root of R2 over B. We'll have the square root of little r2 is equal to the square root of R3 over B. And then finally, the square root of R3 is equal to the square root of R4 over B. Now we're actually ready to finish it off. So now let's take this relationship and then multiply the first two and then square the second one. So let's see what that leaves us with. That leaves us with the square root of r1 r3 is equal to the square root of capital R2 r4 over b squared. But let's recall that r2 times r4 was r3 squared by one of our earlier relationships that we had on the previous board. So that means we can rewrite this as the square root of r3 squared over b squared. But now notice that that's equal to the square root of r2 squared, which can also just be written as r2. Okay, so now bringing this down, we see that we have the relationship that we're going for finally. We have the square root of R1, R3 is equal to R2. And that's a good place to stop.